Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Red Liberty Bread and Roses demo mod Parts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Norman Matun Tomislover, but Inauguration Day. The president elects to before a massive cheering crowd in the Washington Mall. His hands rested easily on the podium. This is, after all, his second time up here. Ladies and gentlemen, he announced into the microphone, silencing the rapturous applause that heralded his ascent. I stand before you today, humbled and grateful. Humbled by the many millions of pledge of support to me and to the Socialist Party and all of its candidates. And I'm grateful for the providence of our Lord who has shown me the way here. He paused for a moment. Letting the cacophonous applause wash over him and up the steps of the Capitol. He didn't turn around, but he smiled at the thought of the legislators behind him hearing the thunder's approval from the crowd. They would call them, send a message that the Socialists were here to stay and beloved by the people. His eyes wandered over the assembled masses. Some were holding flags and banners, mostly for the Socialist Party, but there were a few from the Socialist Labor Party, the Farmer Labor Party, and the Progressive Party, and the Communist Party. He tacitly disapproved of the final one, but had avoided disavowing them while on the cap campaign trail. If they would support him, then he would let them, but he sure as heck wasn't going to give them anything for it. The unions were out in force, too. The American Federation of Labor was, of course, present, as was the redoubtable uh, industrial workers of the world with their red and black banners, and there was even a single banner for the infirm and aging Knights of Labor. Parties and unions. They've all been fighting decades for us for a time when one of their own considered in the White House. De Debs have been monumental, have been a monumental victory, as had his re-election. But Thomas was a victory too. He was a statement. The socialists would not would not burn hot and short, but they were here to stay. I, Matoon Thomas. Can you imagine your middle name being Matoon? That's kind of cool. Uh, but we had Henry Agard Wallace. We lose basically point two political power every single day, which is kind of insane. But intelligence support on the Mexican civil conflict. A situation in Mexico has developed into open violence. Catholic antipathy towards the secular constitution of Mexico established in 1917 has been slowly building for years and has been previously suggested by the Department of War that the situation would eventually spill over into open violence, which it now has. Large sections of central Mexico have rebelled under the leadership of Enrique Gorostita, who the department regretfully cannot early find information about, but would be safe to assume that he desires the presidency of Mexico and to write the Mexican constitution to make Catholicism the state religion. The central government is currently being led by Plutarco Elias Callas, leader of the Labour Party, which uh, the current administration will favor as they are mostly socialist and unionists, serving as a political arm of the regional confederation of Mexican workers, currently the most powerful workers' union in Mexico. For the facts of being compiled in a more comprehensive dossier for the president's review, good god. So there's Kayez, and then there's this guy. So we can send some volunteers, see what we can do. Uh, single division. Um, we could send the Marines, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, forts are nice, amphibious, rivers, forests, hills, jungles. We're really. Yeah, okay. So he's part of the special forces. Well, he's special. He's part of the special, special forces. Um, let's see. Planes, we got some fighters. Ooh, got some more ships too. Basic heavy cruiser, huh? Alright, well, you can go there then. Keep training and using up all the fuel. Uh, well, I guess we don't really have a lot of uh, bombers, or I guess casts, I should say. So do the best you can down here. <clears throat> the Bonds Massacre. Blood has been spilled in Ponce, Puerto Rico on Sunday, which was supposed to be a peaceful protest erupted into a heinous slander or slaughter. At least 19 civilians are dead and hundreds are wounded. Uh, Protest, uh, the protest decreed the execution of Bo Champ and Rosado, the assassins that killed police chief Riggs last February. The protesters uh, also demanded that one of their leaders, uh, Albizu Campos, be released from prison. As enraged citizens gathered, so too did an armed police force. Response. It was unclear who shot first, but it only ended when the streets were cleared except for the corpses. When news of the massacre at Ponce reached Washington and horrified the public, President Thomas ordered the Hayes Commission by executive order to investigate the incident. Currently, the debate rages in Congress that social senators have begun to push for judicial reform in the U.S. held territories, horrifying and reforming the military. The government has, up to now, put up any large scale reform of the military except for the occasional budget cut, but the times are not changing, and we can no longer ignore the fact that we're woefully unprepared for a major war. A war that looks increasingly likely. The military is in dire need of reform. Luckily, we ha just happen to know the man for the job. War is a racket. Hmm. Does his name rhyme with Sutler? Hmm. Ah, oh, we're going to do the National Cancer Act. The NCA shall establish a National Cancer Institute as an independent research institute within the Public Health Service. It should be federal government's principal agency for conducting research and treating on the cause, diagnosis, and treatment of cancer. In 1937, wow, managing the party on the road. At the time, had not been kind to of Abraham Lincoln. He had been, for his day, a radical. The times he professed moderation and at other times required nudging. At the end of the day, he almost always chose the right path, no matter how unthinkable it had been at the time. What was right and what was convenient were rarely the same. Tom thought that uh, a lot as he marched with his comrades of the Lincoln Battalion under the bright New Mexican sun. Cold, a dry wind, a whipping at his face, and making his lips chap and peel. It never occurred to him that it was possible for a desert to be cold, and yet here it was. Snow still clung to the ground behind, red boulders only for the scrub. He grasped, gasped for breath on every other step, so far above sea level that the air was noticeably thinner. 
Officially, the border was closed at crossings in either direction, but there wasn't much of a practical way to enforce that along with 2,000 miles of that stretch from the Gulf to the Pacific. Especially not here, so he and his comrades had gone to Santa Fe by rail and then trekked south to the border. He looked up and for the first time saw two figures sitting atop a ridge. Looking down at them, one clambered down to meet the advancing column and strip of faded red cloth around his arm. Dark eyes peered out from under a worn sombrero. Welcome to Mexico, comrades. Show us who to shoot. Cool. Hey, we're permitting volunteers too, huh? Nice. And it will never happen here. I read this earlier, but or in the last video. <clears throat> the United States uh, is the greatest nation ever to exist. We are the shining city on a hill, the beginning of progress in humanity. Fascism, slavery, exploitation shall never find a home here. We will make sure of it as we have a cup of double chai uh, spiced black tea. I never know how to pronounce it, but we have some comments as well, too. So. Or Reorganization Act, partially as a consequence of the compromising civil man uh, maneuvering of our founding fathers in order to ensure that the branches of the federal government do not have too much power to enforce policy changes, specifically the State Department, as well as the Treasury, with established technocrats having at times more sway over policy than the administration's handpick experts. While well, this may have been incorrect in the context of America in the 1700s, the America of the 20th century, as a vast country that requires a strong central organ in order to enforce policies in times of crisis, and under the guise of President Thomas, executive reorganization is a necessity, with executive assistants and administrators to be consolidated from three to one, as to not only reduce bureaucracy, but to decrease the amount of state workers in top brass positions, with the furthering of the president's powers through the establishment of an executive office for the president. Shifting responsibilities of executive agencies under the eye of the president, immeasurably strengthening our ability to pass our policies about insidious agents in the government, establishment hindering the administration. Oh, that'd be so bad. Oh, we're doing really well. We need to get some uh, fuel, though. Really bad for us right now, real bad. Uh, of course, undisturbed isolation is really killing us with that. I don't mind spending a little bit more political power. Research sufficiency game, that's not too bad. Democratic socialism, a Scott Nearing. Uh, the director, eh. Uh, John Dewey, naturalist. Uh, I want more political power, but whatever. Oh, we're gonna get Scott Nearing. He's, he, he'd be worth it. Alright, so you, that's, uh, uh. We're helping out down here. I guess we'll hop over here, why not? And we're still helping out the Austrians, but we're kind of giving up on them for now. War is a racket. Did you know that? Yes, we did. Uh, here, Oscar, you can lead now. President <clears throat> Thomas waited nervously. He was due to formally meet his new war secretary for the first time, or the first official of business together. This pick was certainly controversial. Uh, he remembered how it barely been confirmed by the Senate just a few by just a few votes. After all, the ferocity which his opponents had fought was hardly surprising. After all, he was an intense opponent for the uh, the moneyed and reactionary interests of the country. His 1935 book had been a scathing expo expose expose of the profit motive behind modern warfare. Uh, finally, the door to his office opened, and Thomas rose to greet the man exactly on time. He noted, Mr. President, let's get to work. General Butler, please sit. Cool. Oh. What happened over here? Also, oh. Well, I guess we lost. What sucks? We were helping out those guys over there, but... Uh, Greater Slovakia is looking a bit Hungarian, truth be told. Um, Poland's looking a little bit weird. Without them owning Lemberg, looks a bit odd, but... I guess China's killing itself, but you know what? In what mod is China not killing itself? At least trying to. Can you help out there? Yeah, well, at least they're back. That's good. How much do we get? Hey, 1.39, Reorganization Act. Oh, where are we voting? Executive Order uh, 7806. They shall establish a most, impor most impartial National Public Employment Relations Commission, which will be tasked with supporting and overseeing the fair collective bargaining practice between employer and employee. Um, this is just autocomplete? I don't know. The death of John Clem. John Lincoln Clem, nicknamed Johnny, Johnny Shiloh, <clears throat> was a famous serviceman within the United States Armed Forces. He lost active duty veteran in the Civil War. John Clem gained his initial fame during the Civil War when at the young age of 11. He shot and killed a Confederate colonel that had been demanded to surrender after a Union route on the field. The young boy was captured and used for Confederate propaganda for the rest of the Civil War. Following the defeat of the Southern traitors, Clem rose through the ranks faster than any, any other man had. Uh, became the youngest NCO in American history, then immediately after, the youngest officer. He had reached the rank of Major General before retiring from the American Army in 1917. As an American hero lived peacefully alongside his wife and children for 20 years until passing away this year in 1937. He was buried in Arlington National Cemetery, and his story has had a large scale resurgence in popularity, inspiring many young boys to rush to the recruiting offices in an attempt to join the army, although the rejection led to much dismay among the children or child population. John Clem was surely good on history as one of America's youngest heroes. Until we meet, meet again, drummer boy. So, when do we vote? Reorganization Act? Um. The Congress are here. Uh, Mr. Speaker, James Hudson Maurer, and Henry Agard Wallace. 
I've seen volunteers. I guess we can send more, technically, so. Um. Okay, so now that bell, that bell goes. The other ones do not. Um, I guess we can try to get the Republicans on board. We only need five, so that's good. <coughs> and we need two more senators, so Democrats, maybe, or Republicans? Ooh. Okay, so we have 242. I hate the Antichrist. Oh, look at this. Yay! At least that one passed. The people were clapping as Pelly stepped on the stage, waving slowly to the crowd that had gathered, guarding him with his mostly uh, silver shirts. He waited for the clapping to stop before he began to speak. My American brothers, has always boomed over the crowd. I gathered all you here today. Discuss the problems that our country's socialist government has brought upon us. A few men in the crowd had chanted with him in agreement. Mr. Thomas, as of late, has passed countless new bells aimed at giving America over to the dark forces of evil. Ever since he set foot upon that sacred ground that is Washington, he has pushed through legislation that asserted the common American and succeeded in only in advancing the interests of the Jews, communists, and worst of all, papists. More people shout on their agreements to Pelly. Thomas calls himself a Christian man, but I don't believe this for a single second. I do not believe the Bolshevik lies that he is spreading. Thomas is a puppet of Satan and the American Antichrist. As he continues his war against Jesus' vision and God's word, everyone started clapping when it stopped, Pelly spoke again. There's only one thing I'll say to Norman. He waited a few seconds before sharply stating what he would become one of the most famous, famous quotes. I hate the Antichrist. The Golden Bridge is, bridge is completed. The Dallas is building the world. California's own Golden Gate Bridge has been completed. The bridge designed to connect Marin County to San Francisco has been under construction for four years thanks to Urban Morrow. People can travel between the two counties without the need of a ferry. It has also been seen as a symbol of socialism triumph in Amer Western America with some considering it to name it. One famous bridge. Or offer Thomas Bridge. Golden Gate. Uh... Let's go. Let's save that one for now. Yeah, I sent two more divisions, huh? All right. Here we go. Doing all right there. Nice, nice, nice. That will never happen here. And then uh, strength of the executive. Nature of the legislation ram makes passing bills we desire in the purest form and practical. They'll be watered down and rendered toothless by the time they come out on the other end. A stumbling block that even depth was unable to surmount. So the reason it goes, we must strengthen the executive branch. Now it must be made clear not just to the public, but also the members of our party that this is not just some power grab by President Thomas. We've learned valuable lessons from the Russians, and will not repeat Lenin's mistake of centralizing too much power into too few people. Once the revolution is complete, we shall set things back in the, to the normal course, and a true socialist democracy shall reign. Until then, we're going to need to be a pra to practically enforce our vision over the protests of the do-nothing bourgeoisie liberals if we must. Look at this, nice. Uh, Bureau of Investigation Report, Pelly in the Silver Shirts, of course. Uh, what up? <coughs> it's been, been, hasn't been long since Pelly's infamous speech. Even when local officials have it seen the Silver Shirts arming themselves, by now several arrests have been made against Silver Legion members for hiding and, and, and transporting large amounts of weapons. Following the Silver Shirts attempted an attack on a court in rural Pennsylvania town, it became a state matter before becoming a federal matter, at which point you had requested an investigation. There has also been a large influx of threats made against the top state officials in Pennsylvania, New York, Michigan, and several other southern states. Not only that, but the uh, hate crimes against minority groups have seen a tempo increase across the nation. As of now, we are hereby concluding the investigation with all evidence being sent your way. We must inform the White House. All right. Basic heavy ship hull, not bad. Well, it's not great. There's nothing here. Um, that's fine. There's nothing there, which sucks. Uh, secondary battery. Sec oh, dual, dual purpose secondary battery. Dual purpose. Hmm. It makes it less slow. Good, less piercing and less slot attack. Gives me better AA though. I'll go with that one, why not? Um let's go with the battle cruiser. It lowers our organization armor by quite a bit, but tattoo. Let me grab that other one there. There you go. Oh, we don't have enough. God dang it. I hate it when, it, when we do that and we just don't have enough for anything. My bad. Um, and grab a little bit of armor. There you go. There you go. Good enough for now. Judicial reform. Genius. Okay, the enemies of the people act. Uh, oh, we lose more political power. We get more stability, though. Well, let's save just in case. The comment includes, Can you please play as a solar empire in the Equestrian War and go down the merciful path? 
or players with specific states of American cause redux and try to create the American monarchy. That second one's more, much more difficult. We need a few more representatives and a few more senators. So Republicans, schnikes. Can we get uh, Democrats on board? Yeah, that's fine. Negotiate with the AFP. We need two more. Uh, congressional consultation. So open honest administration. Uh, well, silver tie. The nation is in crisis. Following Pelley's intense speeches, as well as the major investigations, so Legion of America has launched several attacks on Americans on a scale not seen since the Civil War. They resorted to guerrilla attacks in the southern Appalachians, where towns are being overrun and surprise attacks by Soviet Legion forces. Minorities all the way the, all over the region are being removed from their homes and forced to work for the Legion, and in some cases lynched. John supported the Triple K. Any federal official they come across is immediately jailed, sometimes hung on the spot. Socialists are being treated harsh and, harshly and thrown into the makeshift work camps set up by the Legion. Some innocent civilians, unaffected, are unaffiliated with the Socialists, were murdered to instill fear in other people. Civilian militias working hard hand in hand with the National Guard elements are combating the uprising with the United States Army just joining on in the fight. Let's keep some on. Bruh. Oh, wait, why did I click on that? God dang, I'm gonna do that anyways. Where was this? Ah. Uh, congressional. Insurrection of the states. Reports come from the U.S. about an apparent ongoing insurrection. Originally started in Pennsylvania at the command of one Dil William Dudley Pelley and a self religion organization. It has begun cooperating with other right wing extremist groups across the nation. <clears throat> The army has been working long and hard to tackle this guerrilla rebellion with support from civilians and other nations. Some nations, such as Italy, praise the insurrection for not only weakening the U.S., but promoting a more friendly ideology that, can, that they can agree with. Millions are hoping that this does not lead to a second civil war. Oh, back to court. They took the rulings. Oh, we want to uh, pass the court. Darn, the Supreme Court caught on some of our schemes in the course of our efforts to increase executive powers. They haven't undone everything, but they have set us back a ways. So then, darn the court, full speed ahead. Supreme Court has always been a political tool and an instrument of repression, giving us uh, such national embarrassments such as a Dred Scott ruling, and constantly working against people's interests. It's not even their place to decide what is and what isn't constitutional. They gave themselves that power. We're the even the lawmakers around here anyway. The people have chosen us, have chosen their vision, nothing will stop us now, not even the court. The legitimacy dried up long ago, and our voters will never forgive us if we stop now. The path is clear. Uh, stack the court with an unassailable socialist majority, change a few names on our bills and executive orders, and send them through again to get them approved. It's simpler than it sounds, we don't even need to create too many new seats, just accuse of them. We'll accuse a few more of the questionable justice of treason, the bribery, some high crime or misdemeanor, and replace them promptly. These men have been around for a long time. It should be too difficult to find some slip-ups or other pin on them. Another comment says, uh, the meme face blew me off guard. Yeah, as it should. Someone says, death is a preferable alternative to socialism. And someone else asks, can you do Tino USA as a progressive MCS? The question of judicial review. United States Thomas underscore or dot 17 dot does. Do it. Two-thirds as it is now. Too risky. Try. Too risky. Try. Do it. Rebel yell. Michigan raids. The Silver Legion's rebellion has expanded today, this time in the Midwest, including our home state of Michigan. Reports have come in of men, clad in black, who began raiding small towns in the region, followed by a major riot in Detroit, of course. Of course, it would be Detroit. Uh, it seems likely that these raids are doomed to spread as far as the Rocky Mountains, and a woman turns off the radio. She'd been sitting down knitting. Ever since her husband had killed himself following the socialist rise of power, she relied only on her daughter and son. Uh, the latter had gone missing. Out of respect for him, the sister stayed out of his room, but curiosity would, of course, kill the cat. His room was the same, except for you know, in his bed. Hello, sister. How are you doing? Is mother okay? I ran out to join the Legion. It seems that the stars are f failing in these Michigan skies. I may not come back, so I wish you my best. She fell to her knees in tears. Don't tell mom I'm in Detroit. This is why we can't have nothing, nothing else in Detroit. But we're doing okay. We did pass the act. Uh, do, gotta do this one and uh, strengthen the executive, of course. But uh, what do we do here at the Air Corps, huh? Um, a Butler's reform plan is acting in the country or the Navy. Well, I guess we can't really reform the military too much. I guess we, oh, I guess two thirds of it's okay. Um, bomber defense under the Army. I kind of like that one. Maybe naval air is the future. Marching the fleets, matching the fleets of Europe. Fleet and being. Well, we're not doing that one. The radar stations. We got some. Oh. Super heavy battleship? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love me a super heavy battleship, but. Naval Act. Oh, Dock Output's pretty good. Expansion building of facilities. Uh, less than 280. Output. Bureau of Aeronautics. Well, honestly, sort efficiency and medium airframe design costs. I mean, the efficiency is nice. I guess it's better than what we get blueprints, so. Uh, I'm going to try to pack the court, of course. And then uh, the court tamed. In the meantime, I'm going to support 
you, you could take independence. The cause of self-determination has been at the forefront of a core American idea since our own revolution. At the end of every day, every person deserves a government that desires their will and to shed blood in its inception. If it wasn't for funding, arms and manpower from the French Empire, it's possible our own revolution may have failed hundreds of years ago. Now, Chris, with the opportunity to extend the same existence to revolutionaries of a similar cause, it would only be hypocritical to not jump at the chance God save the Yucatec. If I'm saying that right, I might be, I might not be, I don't know. Basically, I take chances. Um, I'm not sure it's really worth investing too much here. Improve small cannon, maybe? And get a radio. Let me get that. Is that good enough? 7%, it's not bad. Diesel? Yeah, I don't know. Let's go ahead and go with that for now. Um, I'm trying to build a carrier here, of course. It's going to take a couple of years, unfortunately. Grab two things. Um, three for, oh, this is up to six, huh? You guys actually help one here. Strengthen the executive, support independence, and the Union Representation Act. Lose stability, huh? Well, we try it. Oh, good lord, maybe not. Democrats. Yeah, oh no. We definitely will not have enough for this, god dang it. Um, we have to spend way more political power for that one. A debateful interventionism, or debateful intervention. Oh, that'd be nice. It's the beginning of this conflict across the southern border. Uh, the uh, idea of full intervention has been raised more than once by our more enthusiastic congressmen, both for patriotic political reasons and that of the armaments industry's profits. Time's come for the idea to be raised officially within the House and debated seriously. Let us force the democracy by the bullets and we lose a chance forever. The United States of America cannot sit out of the bias. Our authoritarians crush determined warriors of freedom, even if they are Catholics. The Navy. The U.S. Navy started now as a ragtag force, part of the Naval Act in 1794. It has since grown into the most powerful naval armada in human history. <clears throat> Stretching from the Atlantic to the Pacific is the most formidable and most well-developed aspect of the military by far. Uh, this is, however, comes into question in recent years, partially the response to ever increasing fears of spending amidst a fiscal or a financial crisis. The Hoover administration decided to impose a temporary halt on new commissions of naval designs, which was largely continued under the socialist as the military was seen as a budget sink over the welfare, and this has been called into question given the pressing concern of another great war in the foreseeable future, with top commander Bill Hay Halsey advocating for another naval act in order to keep up with the great powers in the sea and the air corps. Since the beginning of time, our war has been fought on land and at sea. In recent decades, humanity has taken up another front of war of the air. This battle can only can bring as many advantages. Bombings can take out hundreds of enemy troops with only a handful of our boys being at risk. Today, the future of the Air Corps is up in the air. Many want an independent Air Force on the same level as the Army and Navy, while other want the Air Corps to continue to be part of the Army. The future of warfare is in our hands. On insurrection, President Thomas was sitting alone in the Oval Office, still in shock about the uprising, despite his emotion, he handled it calmly, but his beliefs that it would die down seemed to be more and more improbable as the days went on. Two distracted notice the door. A secretary walked in. Mr. President, a man asked. I just received word of men arming themselves in Michigan. Should we send troops there in just in case? And Thomas stared at him for a few seconds. I don't know if I should. They're still civilians, after all. Didn't I promise peace? The man looked at the president again. Thomas, there was a woman in Pennsylvania who lost her husband. We can't let such things continue. The Thomas stared at him again. I guess we have no choice, then. I'll do what I must. I'm signing the Insurrection Act. With that, Thomas would go to the Capitol to deliver his next speech, stating that it was, that it was time that Americans used full force against unpatriotic mil militants. He would speak his famous words, It's time to use big guns. Uh, into Ohio. At least five. We brought order to Ohio. Then we gotta go to Michigan. Cool. What's going on here? These guys are definitely not winning. More for the Navy. Nice. And, uh, accept the rulings. Now we're good. We'll send you some guns that we don't have. And then, do a bit full intervention. E. Yeah. First industry would be nice. We'll get some of this, get some more resources if we possibly can. And at least five divisions in Michigan. Well, we have five divisions in Michigan. There's a reason why they call it the Upper Peninsula, god dang it. We're gonna be able to complete this. We might be able to. So we're gonna wait to do this because we just need a god awful amount of political power. <coughs> Not completed. Ooh, a dialogue. Oh wow. Um, silver shirt militants in the small Michigan town only secured a small inn for the first day. A scout returned back to the fortified building and reported to an officer. Uh, the army's county officer, known that Lieutenant at Alex, a military official chasing after him, was going to retake the inn. He rushed to the radio operator's room and pushed the operator out of the way. 
And we go to Virginia next, huh? Oh, what the heck? The operator was shook. Or, uh, sound soldier, arm yourself and prepare to die for the cause. The operator ran away. The officer got all the ammo or information he needed and sent a transmission to the platoon. Uh, Alice, before it's too late, please tell your men to retreat. For the love of God, don't do this. You know that if you do this, you and I will both die. The battle is pointless. And neither of our force will survive. It's only my warning. If I see you or your troops, we will fight to the death. There will be mercy. Have pity on your wives, girlfriends, and mothers. The lieutenant responded just because later. I have my orders. I'll be obey them in any case. So next is North Carolina. Nice. So we really need to save a lot of political power here. President of Ireland assassinated. Who did assassinate the Irish president? Oh, you go right there, though. And after that, strike the final blow. Pele, the man who started it all, his capture will finally bring an end to all the violence. Nice. Well, that's nice. That's good. Um, Commonwealth Navy? Uh, sure, why not? I know it's in Gulf Tower. I don't know why. I, 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 yeah, I'd yeah, I'd imagine so. Oh, wait. How are we supposed to get it in fewer than... I suppose again fewer states. What? Well, maybe I was supposed to deal with that earlier, maybe? Um. Second Irish. Oh, that was fast. Uh, well, okay. Industrial investments? I guess we'll do that one. Uh, uh, Commonwealth Air Force, Commonwealth Army. I guess we're also going to go with uh, Naval Air as the future. Ever since the man first flew in the aircraft heavier than air, the military of the world looked on an interest. Well, the Army Air Corps was founded two decades later and took the reins when it came to aerial operations wars. It wasn't just the Army. However, the rise of the first aircraft carriers, the U.S. Navy decided aerial operations were incredibly important for supporting naval operations on the deep blue. Let's now look at the benefits. Naval aviation would be necessary for successful naval operations. as support units across against larger vessels or providing cover for marines landing on the beaches of enemy territory. We just need the right amount of carriers as well as new types of planes designed for them. It'll be expensive, but who said victory came cheap and built up aeronautics. With the newfound capability of the naval air support, we must, we must keep its development organized. For this, we must create the proposed Bureau of Aeronautics, a naval organization that will oversee all naval air research and development, creating new planes for our Navy pilots to fly between the mediums of the sea and sky. The Bureau will not only focus on the development of prototype craft, but also oversee the development of prototype to functioning plane, thanks to the level of the factory in Philadelphia. Maintenance of aircraft will also be overseen. Repairing planes after naval operations and keeping them in shape for future missions. With this Bureau, as well as scientists and engineers in it, we'll expand our already prevalent naval air power and stay on top of the other nations. Head of the Serpent. Uh, it is done. Pe Pelly had finally become an embarrassment to God, at least that what he had thought. Uh, the soldiers were on his tail. He could hear the boots of the soldiers right behind him. Pele suddenly hit himself in a back alleyway, but how long could he be there? It had been a few hours. He walked through the streets of Nashville, where his once his final stronghold was at. That was until he let his guard down and walked with his head down, thinking, Why? How? How did I fail? He was angry at God and announced him in his head. Suddenly, a voice uh, uh, shouted, Freeze! He looked at him, saw himself surrounded by troops. The rifles aimed at him. Pele thought he had one more trick up his sleeve as he looked out of the wall at the shot behind him. You hear tech shall never win. He jumped into the wall with such force that he knocked himself out. He lay on the ground unconscious and bleeding. Powerful until he announced his faith. And we didn't do anything here. Uh, we just did this, so. Pele's been captured. Well, I guess. Um, well, we did it. We, we, didn't, we didn't even have to move our soldiers. Rebel yell. Um, so the president of four states. But does it still do anything if we get rid of them already? Does it continue on? Because now we're back in July. I guess it it's okay, and we we need to go, and we'll go back and do a lot of things here. Um, but <clears throat> there was an independent air force, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Once again, we've got uh, more elections, and why would we vote Democrat? So now I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna lie. I I tell you guys, uh, it was impossible to pass the thing or uh, to pass the judicial act or judicial procedures reform act without using cons commands. So we did use cons commands just to see what it'd be like. Um, we would have to accept the rulings like normal, but we're going to pack the court because we can, and the court tamed. Now that we've gotten the Supreme Court dealt with and all of our executive actions vetted, we can move forward with the rest of our agenda. Nothing can stop the new dawn that approaches, especially not some old stogie or stodgy old men in the caps. So we can still do all this stuff, but we're going to wait. The NGA shall establish federal authority to regulate the rates change charged by interstate natural gas transmission companies. Um, so we're going to wait to do this one because we have stuff to do here. Um, we could probably do the East Coast, which would be good. East Coast... Maybe southwest. Let's at least do east coast to begin. Make sure we can keep our lead over everybody else, hopefully. 
And we'll let these guys mostly do it because I don't want to lose any more guns or political power or anything like that. Demo ball for desk, but can it last? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, we're still building ourselves up more. Also, we did get down to isolation, which is not too bad. But we could be building up more stuff here in the meantime, anyways. Uh, basic medium tanks, it's not bad. It is 1938. We are packing the court here, though. And the court team, but at what cost? That's a good question to ask. Uh, I guess you should be able to move in. There you go. We did move our bombers down here, too. The bombers are doing a very, very good job. Alright, so West Coast. Um, just in case, just a little bit. Middling campaign, not great, not terrible. Oh boy. Uh, the Great Plains. Oh, that's good. We definitely want to do the Great Plains next, probably. Ooh, supplies going to be very bad down here. Very, very bad. Um, USA underscore SPQA. Okay, then. Can you guys help out here somewhere? Supplies are really bad, though. We should probably use that. Gumpetcha? Oh, managing the party. We're functioning well still. It's good. No issues with that at all. A bad campaign. Oh, god dang it. Come on. Um, the Rockies or the Great Plains? Well, I guess we're going to go to the Great Plains next. Oh, they're getting attacked. That's not good. Definitely want to guess. Oh, and they're going to war. Decent uh, opposition campaign. Don't want to lose there. Let them get attacked there. We might actually just remove ourselves from here just because it's not looking so good. Japanese aggression in China. Mustang gets an illegal invasion. Uh, General Embargo should be giving them pause to think about what they're doing. Aggression will not go unanswered. Okay, then. Court tamed. At what cost? Was it worth it? Well, I guess we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, just for now. Let's just stay right here. The supplies are so bad. Um, what do we do with it for now? The Great Lakes wouldn't be bad to do over. The Rockies, Great Lakes. Middle mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, Great Lakes, maybe. Great Lakes, East Coast. I'll go back to the East Coast. Former Vice President Reed passes away. <coughs> the U.S. of A. Has really known and more in line with the proletarian than Vice President uh, Jack Reed. Having uh, gained prominence during the First World War for his journalism from the front lines of the conflict, keeping the workers and lower classes informed of what he deemed to be a rich man's conflict, the aristocracy of the old world throwing the lives of the peasants against each other. On multiple occasions, the man was even arrested, suspected of committing espionage as he snuck over national borders in order to get closer to the major battlefields of the Great War. Following his service in the Red Guard during the Russian Civil War, Jack Reed returned to the U.S. of A. to preach socialistic and authoritarian communism uh, throughout his homeland and multiple instances advocating for similar armed revolution of the workers within the United States. His speeches, alongside his wartime journalism, afforded him large-scale popularity of the American left, and more specifically, the more radical wings of the Socialist Party of America. Although considered dangerous even by his fellow party members, <coughs> no successful attempt was ever made to dislodge him from the party. Having declined another term as vice president due to his worsening condition due to typhus, Vice President Reed spent the last few years of his life along with his wife, Louise Bryant, a similarly radical journalist, and two children, Silas and George Reed. Before inevitably passing away this year at 38 at home, surrounding by his family, he is to be given a state funeral and expected dignitaries from the Soviet Union may even be in attendance. Expected that they'll be there. A uh, farewell, Comrade Reed. Goodbye. And then second bill of rights. Although battered by economic strife, America is getting better. We have passed many bills that would help the American people. But while these bills have been great, we have not have been ambitious enough. With the announcement of our new mandate, we can unveil our most extensive legislative work, a second bill of rights. With these bills, we plan to achieve a government that supports the basic needs of a man, a working man, of course, uh, a job worth working, a job, a house worth living in, and a nation worth fighting for. The plan is bold, but a true egalitarian society, this is the cornerstone of everything. Nice. Wrangling the Senate. All uh, right, then. And then what? Right to learn. Right to work. Right to life. Right to dem democracy. America reborn. Uh, food stamp plan. That's not bad. We got a lot more things to pass. Uh, fair stuff. Uh, right to learn. Education is the key and door to the gainful employment and constructive political participation. It's an essential component of not just the life of an individual, but democracy itself. An uneducated worker will make mistakes and potentially injure themselves or others. As such, education should be considered a right to be enjoyed by all, not just a privilege to be hoarded by a few. To that end, we will found the Department of Common Education, Government the Council School Houses, Districts, and Colleges in the U.S. of A. Yeah. Rockies, huh? We have a single close air split plane, huh? There you go, 
just help bomb him anyways. Alright, well that'll go on. Um, Natural Gas Act, we could try it. Uh, Union Representation Act? Well, we're gonna save, because you never know how this mod's gonna end up and turn out, so... <coughs> oh god. Force it through? It fails, and it can't force it through quite a bit that much. Okay, we did that. That's nice. So we can build a right. Right to learn. A couple more senators. Ooh. Hey, we're going to get it. We spent a lot of PP, but that's okay. Good campaign. It's passed. There's a little bit of stability, but that's okay. Oh, we got even more here. Nice. Um, a very small margin in the East Coast. Great Plains. Keep bombing them, I guess, you know. Subservice. I mean, good opposition now. Oh, sucks. Doing very well with the Navy stuff. Um, basic heavy ship pull. Now let's come back and do this again. Dual purpose. I'll go that one too. Got more than enough finally to do all this. Or whatever we really want to throw on here. Uh, not that one yet. There you go. Basic medium tanks. Oh, we're okay, okay for now. Might be here for a while, actually. Rank of Town Alliance. Oh, boy, I'm concerning. Um, invest in higher education. Our country is no shortage of prestigious colleges and universities, nor a shortage of competent minds. The shortage appears as an economic opportunity. Plenty of people are smart enough to make it to college, but don't have the resources. In order to rectify this, the Department of Common Education begin to offer long term loans to qualifying students to enable them to pursue higher education. God dang, another middling campaign, huh? Chairman uh, Chief Justice Arthur Hayes of the Hayes Commission has received several letters from Governor Win Winship of Puerto Rico. Evidently, the governor has been pleading with him and several other members of the special investigation to arrest specific individuals in Puerto Rico that he claims are nationalists. Disturbed by this, the commission has released these letters to the public. Public response has been overwhelming, of course. <clears throat> Governor Winship's attempts to steal the investigation away from the misdeeds related to the Ponce massacre have only resulted in vast backlash. Politicians all over the country are making statements calling for President Thomas to remove Governor Winship from power. Oh yeah, this stuff is all done here too. <coughs> um, a and federal investigation have just barely skipped an assassination attempt last week. It seems that like Governor Winship's down as leader of Puerto Rico is likely to come to an end anyways. If he's removed and we ensure justice is served, it might be enough to heal the divide between Washington and San Juan, but it could cost us. Clearly he's not fit for the position and for the common education. Norman Thomas, President of the U.S. of A., has introduced a piece of legislation intended to create a new cabinet level Department of Education. This legislation aims to ensure that every individual has the opportunity to receive a quality education, regardless of the background or circumstances. It emphasizes the importance of common education for the betterment of society and promotion of equal opportunities for all. Thomas believes that this legislation is crucial for creating a more just and equitable society and is determined to see a pass in the law. Education is the right of all citizens. Uh, equivalent education. Uh, personal plea. Santiago. Iglesias Panin, a Puerto Rican representative of Congress, has penned a letter to President Thomas, and Santiago implores him to champion a movement for the Puerto Rican statehood. It claims that sentiments are both correct in my state and Congress. And in the midst of the sweeping and harsh prosecution of the murderers who carried out the Ponce massacre, it's true that the cooler heads have finally prevailed. Even the nationals in Puerto Rico seem to be willing to cooperate in return for a few concessions. This could be a good opportunity for us to finally be bring peace to the island. I said it would mean better opportunities for investment and commerce. This ain't even mentioned Puerto Rico finally getting a vote in Congress, and thus the same the country. Ah, yeah, sure, why not? Set school resources. While public and private schools alike are common throughout the United States of America, and indeed enrollments jumped out to 100% over the past two decades, the resources at the disposal of these schools are vastly different. Some are multi story brick buildings with entire wings, while others are just common one room schoolhouses that could have existed in 1776. The newly formed DCA will give, be given the task uh, of standardizing these institutions and rationalizing them in a system that can be officially organized. Can we get them passed? I don't know. we got to save every single time here, man. I just don't know whether we can pass it for now. <coughs> And getting these guys done here is going to be a pain in the butt, too, but whatever. Yeah, boy, this is done with the naval doctor for now. Oh, God. The Democrats are usually pretty good to work with. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and get that. No, we'll put the power. And for this, oh, Republicans, we need four. I'm going to go with the Democrats just in case. That's nice. There you go. And now the, the protector. Wait, why does the protector of Tunisia get uh, the 49th state? Huh? Well, I guess now this total center is 98. 
Total uh, for the United States. Following the passage of Puerto Rico Enabling Act in Congress, Puerto Rico's ratified state constitution has now been amended the, as the 49th state of the United States of America. The new elected governor, Luis Munoz Martin, has allowed the development of the new era for Puerto Rico and for our United States of America. With only six seats in House of Representatives, a relatively small island does not have a dramatic impact on politics, but it's another state that is seemingly very loyal to the socialists. The rallying line in the new state senate is Se Podemos con Thomas. Yes, we can with Thomas. The union grows. Cool. All right. So any more political power though. And oh, good. We're gonna build a crap ton of these. 177, 70 is fine. 70 is oh, let's build up already. Cool. And we're gonna build. Just build, living walls, do out of everything. Good campaign, good. It's good to have a good campaign, right? Absolutely. Oh, Republicans? West Coast? What the heck? No Republicans in my West Coast. Are y'all gonna go in or just gonna sit there? Various and higher education, alright then. Work with the teachers unions. Uh, more stability, formalized compulsory education. Many states in a great nation or the union have already formalized compulsory education, but until now, no federal law mandating it has existed. This will be rectified immediately. The potential of our youth cannot be wasted whiling away the hours on the farm labor or factories or be kept home because of the parents do not deem education to be a goal worth pursuing. The Great New England Hurricane. Um, yeah, let's see, let's get this first. There you go, and there you go. A good New England hurricane has finally made landfall. The people of Connecticut have known the incoming hurricane for the past five days, but nobody, not even the Weather Service, could imagine how violent it was going to be. It was projected to be a moderately large hurricane, which was certainly unusual for the region, but it turns out this uh, this hurricane has been the most violent hurricane seen in American history. Indeed, if it wasn't for the Weather Service spotting it, the hurricane could have easily become the most fatal in American history as well. It sure through every building in its path from Bridgeport, Connecticut, all the way down to the Canadian border. As if the wind wasn't destructive enough. The floods that has caused are even worse in Long Island. Waves of more than 14 feet high were recorded. Almost all of southern New England was battered by 10 plus foot waves. <coughs> Excuse me. Most phone and telegraph lines have been toppled, so information is rather scant and estimated 600 to 1,000 people have died. We cannot be sure, but experts, uh, most experts believe the hurricane has caused multiple hundreds of millions of dollars in damages. Luckily, multiple charity organizations are on the scene trying to find temporary housing for the people. A small town writer from the area of Mr. Philip, uh, Howard Phillips Lovecraft, ooh, hmm, has been receiving significant praise over the past few days for support of relief efforts and has pledged that the proceeds for his next book would go to rebuilding New England. As we, we as Americans must unite to support the families affected by the hurricane. Absolutely awful what has happened. Nothing you can do just yet. And what's next? Great Plains and Middling. Oh, come on. It's always Middling. Great Plains again. And then maybe more Rocky Mountains? Probably. Work with teachers' unions. Teaching is on the uh, pillar professions that hold up our democracy. And teachers often have the same motivations that we do. See the students succeed and make sure they go far in life. It's an admirable goal and one of the greatest national's failings that is that education isn't prioritized as much as it should be. We'll open up official channels of dialogue between the government and the many teachers' unions in the country and hear the suggestions on how to further improve our education system. More stability would be nice, though. So it's already October. We're going to be done with elections soon. Fun public libraries? Uh, sure. 56 days. Federal education grants. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that one too. Equivalent Education Act? Uh, nothing there as well. That kind of sucks. There's Rocky Mountains. Oh, come on, Rockies. Come on. Mm, not sure how much we can actually use any of this stuff, really, but well, we'll try. That sucks. Yeah, since we're here. Okay, so elections are being held already. So basically, we gained, the Communist Party got nothing, the Socialist Party got one, the Republicans lost two, two, the Democrats and the American First Party lost one. The, oh my god, the House gained six Communist seats, we lost 41 seats, the Democrats gained 39, oh my god, that was so bad for us. For the House? Holy crap, that was so bad. Oh, there's so many Democrats here, so many Democrats. And then for this one, well, schnackies. I feel bad now. Oh well, we'll keep doing the best we can. No matter what happens. Oh, we're on superior power power, I guess. Yeah, but auction wise, um Oh, we already have oh oh my god, let's give it to this one. Oh, this is kinda of different. Green water? Huh. Discreet valor, retreat chance. While well, retreating. Well, I don't want to retreat too much. Nighttime attacking. Well, we're gonna have quite a few carriers, so probably this would be best. Efficient communication, yeah. It's definitely worth getting rid of that other one. My god. That's so bad. Make some armor plates too. Anything else for global conflicts? Not really. Um, that was so bad. Election season ends. That's good. Call a party conference. Functioning well. We're ready for anything. I like it. 
Um, we got all this stuff to do down here. Right to work. America was founded by workers. Hard work built this nation from the Jamestown colony to the skyscrapers in New York. Work is everything. It's one how gains respect of one's peers and the money to put food on the table and a roof overhead. That work itself is commodified under capitalism as a serve. It guarantees an earned class that cannot take care of itself. A desperate mass that can be used to reserve as a reserve army of labor. Should the workers strike, they can be fired and replaced by a desperate underclass. Work is not simply a matter of dignity or well-being, it's a matter of power. We shall strive to enshrine a right to work in American law to ensure that any worker may find meaningful, gainful employment, building roads or dams or schools across the great nation. Where there's no underclass, no reserve army of labor, capital of no choice but to bow to the demands of the United Working Class. Alright, cool. Happy after 39, everybody, we're going to keep building. Build, 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 build. Well, let's keep building up more roads in Michigan and India Indiana. Uh, I guess we have more, more military factories would be nice. Seems we can't really build too many of them right, really right now, so. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Heavy MGs. Alright, let's get more output too, because we uh, really need some. Event. I love reading about events, but there's nothing to read. That's a joke. I'm working with the teachers' unions for now. Um, Alright. Keep going down this way. Oh, we just got the event. Oh, that's what it was. Replace democracy. Um, probability studies, okay. Well, all right. Oh man, look at this. The Democrats did really well. well who's this? Uh, three representatives. Yeah, peace for America first. Man, there's a lot of upsets. We're pretty popular in the Midwest, but everywhere else, even the speaker is upset. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Um, well, since we're here. They just got to come fire. Oh, boy. Nice. Um, reliability for trucks. Owns Mich Owns Michigan. You can do Ford. <laughs> That's it. Marmon Heights. Well, I should really want that one. I'm a car for more fuel usage. I guess we'll go with that one. I don't know. Workplace democracy. I guess we can do that one, too. I do want to do the equivalent education act, though. Let's at least pass one more bill in this episode. Anatolian Federation. You know, Poland, what else is going on here? Uh, are you at war with Italy? Oh, you're at war with all those people. Look at this piggy bank. Massive death suspending, yeah. Question will block your loyalty. Continental Entente. War shower pack we saw last time. Commonwealth. And Afghanistan is still killing itself, so. But what else is new? Oh! When did they go to war with each other? A smaller Bosnia. Good for them. Um, in the meantime, I guess, naturalists. Um, well, I would like more stability. Where's construction speed? By this point, I don't really want him. It took him a while to get this guy, so we'll go with John Dewey, I guess, and we'll get some more stability. Sure. Right, military command. I guess army speed would be good. Attrition speed, attrition. Plus 16% is pretty decent, but still. Ah. Huh. That's fast. Spirit Rowan does not win wars, yeah? Drop things are useless in my opinion. Hey, we actually have enough fuel now. We have logistics fulfillments. It's actually coming along. Very good, very good. Um, start building some more refiners there too, because you can. Uh, I'm missing child care. A critical part of women's emancipation is freedom from the burden of children. This burden is only placed upon them because there's the opinion of the majority of men that a woman's place is in the home, caring for the children. These children act like a ball and chain, preventing women from leading their own lives and pursuing their own careers by funding affordable nationwide childcare. We'll be able to both provide a baseline education for young children and ensure that their parents are free to work and relax as much as possible. Here for playing. Save infamy. Oh, we might go to World Japan, huh? Oh, look at this. Well, let's see what we can do. We need more representatives. We have enough senators, actually. Yeah, work with the Democrats. Oh, yeah, we're going to definitely work with the Democrats throughout this entire thing, probably. We can also extend legislative ascension. Legisl 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 Construction 3. Extraction. It passed. More research speed. So let's just look a little better. All right. Equivalent education. Wait. Do we just do this one? Work with the Democrats. We do it again. Oh, I think this is bugged. So we did it twice. Oh, we didn't get any more. Oh, we're still suffering from the Great Depression. Well, I guess we're all depressed here, but what else is new? Um... Replace democracy, I guess. Ensure fair competition. So we can end child labor. Huh. Alright, if we have to, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I'll do this one first. And continue to stockpile more political power. I can have a feeling that the next episode is going to be a little shorter, but whatever. Oh, man, let's get this one. Replace democracy. Yeah, 
Right to life. Oh. Right to democracy. We get an event and we get an event. Um. A black spot of the American Industrial Revolution, child labor has not only been viewed as, rather cynically as a necessity by business magnates, but also some sort of heroic deed by the youth that contribute to the longevity of the country. Though the sentiment has rapidly declined in popularity, with the 1900 census finding nearly one in six children were engaged in some form of unemployment outraging many. Following the advance of the National Child Labor Committee, the administration has produced the most comprehensive list of protections, the Equitable Labor Standards Act, which seeks, uh, uh, uh the removal of the previously presumed IUD of children, barring parents and family from sending the younglings to slave off in factories of their own business or the business of others, and a guarantee in the case of a newly inspired youth the same equal treatment in terms of pay and safe working conditions as the elder peers. No more shall the child be relegated as a mere resource, they shall be now be able to forward or be able to work for the future and enjoy the youth, without having to worry about taking care of the financial burdens of their own families instead and choose their own destinies. With any power, oh, defense went to them. With any power of uh, force I could have recognized that following the Great War, no side left the negotiation table with any satisfaction towards what was gained or lost. The French Republic of the day was distraught of the failure to reclaim the region of Alsace-Lorraine, long considered a core part of the natural borders of France. It comes a little surprise that the war has broken out over the region. Following ultimately presented the Reich government that, quickly that was quickly denied, French force began mobilization very quickly, and sent a declaration of hostility. Whether or not this war will end quickly, with cooler heads prevailing, if we will be stuck in this trenches, or another generation thrown in the mud to be lost forever, it's largely unknown. Lots are going out again. Yeah, we can see initial conflict, I guess. Oh, let's get, let's get to the war. Oh. Another good war with the Greeks, too. Oh, hello. Uh, oh. What the heck happened here? Oh, you're in Warsaw. Wow, that was really fast. So they're fighting over here and here, and the Balkan League exists, too. They're probably going to go to war with these guys as well, but that's probably not going to be good for them in the end, but you never know, I guess. Ernest King. Uh, sort of efficiency. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Yeah, that's kind of sad, but, uh, you know, I think we might just end the episode here, maybe. Can we get involved at the very least? Global conflicts? No? Oh, god dang it, what the heck? I, think, I have a feeling the next episode is probably going to be the last. Ah, Hugenberg! Oh. I was sending war debt. And we're back at war, so. Um, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, so we'll probably finish out the rest of this, uh, look at the mod demo. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.